during the lockdown, my household has been a small one, just my wife and I, as our three adult children have all left home. So just the two of us, unless I were to include Buttercup the Bear, who usually lives in my wife's school, but for the time being has taken up residence in the deanery. From here, she and my wife are uploading videos for the benefit of their early years class, now dispersed in their homes, but still able in this way to continue learning together. Having acted as cameraman, I've grown rather fond of Buttercup, and I've also been reminded of how helpful children find it to learn about the fascinating, puzzling and sometimes frightening world around them with the help of a reassuring, friendly character such as this bear. But why is this reassuring friend usually an animal rather than, say, another child? Perhaps because the animal, like Buttercup, is both like and unlike us and so there is no hint of rivalry or threat. It's also the case that for most of human history, we have lived in much closer proximity to animals than we do now. And in our stories, our myths and our fables, think of Aesop, we have used animals to help us reflect on how to live and our place in the wider world. After all, without living other living things, we would be entirely alone in the universe. In this lockdown COVID-19 world, many people have taken a new delight in such things as birdsong in their pets and have noted that this horrible pandemic for humans is actually benefiting other living things. A widely shared online video shows how all over the world animals have started to re-enter urban spaces from which they've been pushed out. So goats in Lundudno, deer in East London, wild boar in Paris, otters in Singapore, kangaroos in Adelaide, and yes, a bear entering Monrovia in California. I take all this to be an invitation to reflect on what was wrong with the pre-COVID-19 world, and how we might imagine and begin to work towards a future that is richer and better than normal ever was. Better not only in how we relate to the other living creatures with whom we share this planet, but also better in relation to our care for one another, our response to inequality and injustice, and our perception of what really matters in our lives. In this Easter season, we are reminded of the risen Jesus coming to a group of frightened disciples, some tempted to just go back to their old lives and ways of doing things, and Jesus sending them out to build a new and better world. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, pictured in scripture and much Christian art as a dove, they formed a new community to work for and be a sign of the future that God is preparing for us. In the book of Revelation, this future is pictured in terms of God wiping the tears from every eye. In the prophet Isaiah, as a world where a child can play in the midst of animals now thought of as dangerous, and where the wolf shall live with the lamb. What's that, Buttercup? Oh yes, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 7. The cow and the bear shall graze, and their young shall lie down together. Alleluia. Amen.